What's going on everybody? Johnny Bannon here at Trepa Technologies and we're going to finish up domain 1.5 by going over transceivers and protocols, different form factors, and then some really exciting stuff, connector types. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. This is going to be a super quick video for me. So that's probably, you know, at least 10 minutes or less. So let me get my face out of the screen. This is not important for learning. So in today's video, we're going to go over transceivers and then connector types. So transceivers and protocols. So a transceiver is a device that can both transmit and receive signals. And that's going to be kind of just outlining everything we're talking about. Then the protocol defines the rules and conventions for the communication between network devices. So this is our triple, this is our standards, right? That say, okay, yeah, you have a transceiver that's going to be able to transmit and receive a signal, whatever that signal is. But how do we you know, serialize that signal? How do we encapsulate that signal? What are the protocols that define that, that tell us how to do that? So we have Ethernet and fiber channel. So Ethernet is that IEEE 802.3 standard that we talked about in our last video and kind of in depth. So you want to uh, learn more about it, go to our previous video, domain 1.5.1. Then we have fiber channel. This is a high speed networking protocol primarily used for storage area networks. So this is a different standard than Ethernet called fiber channel that's highly used in SANS storage area network. So those, those I've used NetApp. So I always talk about those huge NetApp clusters of all those hosts and just, uh, you know, rows and rows of, uh, solid state drives or hard drives and it supports speeds up to 128 gigabytes per second. So the different form factors we have, sorry, my images are a little, they're lapping over here. But we have the different form factors. Now what we're saying is, okay, so transceivers, protocols, cool, understand that. But now how we, well, the cabling, where is it plugging into? How are we putting that into network hardware? We have different form factors. So we have small form factor pluggables, SFPs. And if you worked at any level in networking, you're very used to these and how much of a pain they can sometimes be if you get it wrong. So make sure that you know, beyond just the network plus exam, it's hard for us to memorize all these different connector types and form factors we're going to talk about because there's SFPs that are for multi-mode, single mode, different hardware types. Uh, some are like if you're in a Cisco environment, you know how much of a pain it can be. You may need a Cisco specific SFP for that model of switch or router. So very important that we do some extra research prior based on our hardware models that we're working with on what SFPs they accept. So SFP transceivers support a range rate of data rates, different modes, single mode, multi-mode, even copper, right? So SFPs can also be for Cat5 uh, from 100 megabits to 4 gigabits per second. And they're using Ethernet and fiber channel networks. But again, that could be fiber, copper, twin axe that have these different SFPs. Then we have quad small form factor pluggables, QSFPs. Therefore, high density, hot swappable transceivers designed for data rates up to 40 gigabits per second. This is more accurately like our twin X cables, right? And are commonly used in data centers and high performance computing environments. So now let's go over something super exciting that is connector types. These are all the different connector types for fiber and ethernet that we're gonna go over. So SC, the subscriber connector is a fiber optic connector used for single mode and multi-mode fiber optic cables. We have the LC, the local connector is a small form factor fiber optic connector designed for high density connections. We have a straight tip. The straight tip connector is a fiber optic connector with a bayonet style locking system, kind of like our BNC connectors we're going to see in the next slide, featuring a round shape and twist lock design. We have multi-fiber push-on or MPO connector that's a high density fiber optic connector designed to support multiple fibers in a single connection. You can kind of see in that image, we have eight, 12 and 24 fibers and a single MPO. Now moving on to some copper, we have RJ11 and RJ45. Hardly ever see RJ11 anymore. That was for our old DSL and for like our actual hardwired telephone lines that weren't necessarily like VoIP. Um, the RJ11 defines the connector type, right? RJ45 is what we're, we're used to seeing. Cat5 through Cat6e is RJ45 connector types. Or Cat6 alpha, excuse me. F type. So F type is going to be a connector for coax or coaxial cable, which is again um, still copper, 
but not what we typically see in like our data centers between switches and routers. That's always RJ45 when it's just Cat5 to Cat6A. So F-type connector is a coaxial connector commonly used for cable television, satellite television, and broadband internet connection. So this is what you see in your house, right? This is that uh, RG6 and RG11 we talked about in the previous video. Um, and then we have a B and C connector type that's also for coax that has a locking mechanism. So like if you're in an environment where you need coaxial and you're moving around a lot, uh, or you have just the potential for something to slip, a B and C is easy. It's a quick connect. We use this in our radio uh, communications a lot in the military uh, when I was in the army. So I'm very used to using B and C's, but it was typically again for like radio connections and things like that, where that F type is commonly used for your small office, home office, broadband connections. Okay, told you this was gonna be a quick video. So now let's go ahead and do our quiz. So I'm gonna come here to our learning management system. We're gonna go to our Network Plus course here. We're gonna come to our quizzes. And we're gonna come to domain 1.5.2. And I'm gonna move my face over here just in case I wanna clip this for our social media. So question one, rich protocol is primarily used for storage area networks, SANs, and supports high-speed data transmission over fiber optic cables. That's gonna be fiber channel. If you're wondering why it's spelled like this, F-I-B-R-E, this storage area network technology was made in Great Britain. That's how they spell fiber, or UK. Question two, which fiber optic connector type uses a small form factor push-pull design and is commonly used in data centers for high density connections. So obviously we know that it's not gonna be D, right? Because B and C is for coax. But now we kinda, um, <laughs> you know, for the CompTIA Network Plus exam, we have to know the different fiber optic connector types. So for uh, data centers for high density connections, I'm gonna go with LC, that local connector. Question three. Which connector type is commonly used for Ethernet networking and supports both fast Ethernet and gigabit Ethernet? That's, you know, anyone that works in IT should know this. That's RJ45. Which of the following connectors are primarily used for telephone and low speed data connections, such as DSL Internet? Kind of some dinosaur technologies here, but it's in our exam objectives. That's RJ11. Question five. Which of the following transceiver form factors, so only two options now, A and D, is designed for high density, high speed data transmission and supports data rates up to 40 gigabits per second and beyond? That's our quad small form factor pluggables. Then last question, what is the main advantage of using SFPs, small form factor pluggable transceivers in a network? So what is a main advantage? That's going to be A, they're hot swappable and allow for easy upgrades without powering down equipment. So that is one of the things about SFPs, slide them in and out while a network device is on for the most part, right? Obviously you see the vendor, you see the product you're using, but they're supposed to be hot swappable. All right, everyone. I wanna thank you for viewing and do not forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for our next videos where we're gonna finish up domain 1.6 and we'll be that much closer to finishing domain 1 of our full Network Plus course. Thank you for viewing.